Let's receive our daily bread. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive our daily bread from you, the living word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask you to give us exactly what you would have us to hear and receive and grow on. And we thank you for it right now. Jesus is my Lord. Confess with me now. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Today, he gives me ears to hear as the learned. And he opens the eyes of my understanding so that I know what is the hope of his calling. Today, I receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives and abides forever. And today is my day of salvation. And now is my appointed time in Jesus name. So the Holy Spirit has been teaching us about the soil of our heart for it to be prepared and rich for it to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God when it is planted in it. And we found, or we, we've learned that the parable of the sower is Mark chapter four, Matthew 13, and Luke chapter eight. And the second type of soil is the stony ground, but we have removed all of the stones out of the stony ground. And the Holy Spirit has shown us that the good soil is a heart full of love. You know, Jesus, as he walked the earth, he was many times telling us to walk in love, love your enemies, love God, love the brethren. And he even said this, he said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, the old commandment was to love one another, let's see, love one another as you love yourself. But the new commandment is to love one another as I have loved you, which is an even higher commandment. And you know, when he gives us the commandment. He gives us the grace to do it, and he enables us to do it. So it's not that we have to make ourselves do it. It's that the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, puts that on the inside of us so that we can do it. Listen to this scripture in um, Colossians. He says that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, that their hearts, that our hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. And in Romans 5, he says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to ask you, how do we receive that? How does that become a reality in us? By Philemon 1, by acknowledging every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit has taken us to 1 Corinthians 13 so that we know what love is and what love is not. Love is patient and kind. So we simply acknowledge that. I am patient and kind because I am the love of God. Then it says, love is not boastful or vainglorious. Oh, and then, no, it says, uh, love is not never envious. Love envies not. It is never envious, nor does it boil over with jealousy. So that's something that love is not. Then it says, he says, love is not boastful or vainglorious. And then he says, love is not arrogant, conceited, or inflated with pride. And this is in the Amplified. And he also said it does not display itself haughtily. So love is not arrogant, 
It is not conceited and it is not inflated with pride. In 1 John 2, 16, the Holy Spirit says this, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And that word pride is braggadocio, that's in the Greek, and it means self-confidence, boasting, or pride. You know, you hear people say uh, to have self-confidence, but the Word never tells us that. It tells us to have confidence in the Lord, that He is our confidence. And so our confidence is not in our flesh. Our confidence is not in what we can do. Our confidence is in the Lord our God. And then another scripture that the Lord pointed out to me is in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6. And these were the instructions to leaders in the church. And he was telling them that uh, giving them specific instructions or qualifications, I should say. And one is well spoken of from without. One was that he would be able to rule his own house because if you can't rule your own house, how can you rule the body of Christ? But this also was a qualification. He says, not being a novice, lest being lifted up in pride, he fall into the condemnation or the judgment of the devil. So just like unforgiveness and strife are, are two things that we cannot afford to have in our heart, so it's the same way with pride. We cannot afford to have pride in, in our hearts over anything. And... Let me find the definition. Okay, so just a definition of pride is to, to have a, um, a high opinion of oneself in their ability or in their worth. To have a high opinion of one's, uh, oneself in their own ability or in their own worth. And then it also said a feeling of being better than others. You know, the word tells us to esteem others better than ourselves. And so we cannot afford that. So I'm trusting the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit right now yourself to shine the light on any pride that might be in the soil of your heart because that is, that is Satan's nature actually, whereas love is God's nature and humility and meekness is God's nature. So ask the Lord to show you any area in your life that you've got any type of pride. And remember yesterday, one of the scriptures revealed to us that contention comes only by pride. So when you're in strife or contention with someone or tempted to be, then pride is the root of it. So at that point, recognize it and get rid of it. There... Um, was a scripture that the Lord pointed out to me also that he began to minister to me on because this was when the children of Israel were, they had come out of Egypt. They had wandered in the wilderness 40 years because of their unbelief. And now they were ready to go into the promised land. And this was the next generation. And Moses, by the Lord, what the Lord spoke through Moses, telling them what 
they were going to receive in the promised land. And it was, it was a powerful land. It was, he said it would give them houses full of all good things that they fill not. Wells dig that they dig not. He would give them goodly cities. He would give them vineyards that they didn't plant. And so it was a land literally flowing with milk and honey. So now they are getting ready to cross over the Jordan and to go into that land. And the Lord is telling them, now when you come into this land, and he said, you'll eat bread without scarceness. And he said, your gold and your silver will multiply. But listen to what he said, because he's also giving them a warning, which this is very applicable to you and me as well. So let's take heed to this. He said, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So at this point, they don't have anything. They are about to go in and possess the land. So he's telling them, now when you get over there and you're receiving and you're possessing your land, he said, don't let your heart be lifted up. In one place, he said, lest you, your heart be lifted up and you think that it was your might and the power of your hand that gave that to you. So he's giving them a huge warning here. Well, this warning is for us as well, because as we begin to possess our land, as we begin to possess our hundredfold and possess the, the blessings that rightfully belong to us, then don't allow your heart to be lifted up in pride with whatever it is that you have received from the Lord. And then another place, this is what Jesus said in Luke 18. He said, two men went up into a temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican or a sinner. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Notice he prayed with himself. God, I thank you that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, so listen to the pride in this Pharisee. Saints, we have to be on guard that we don't have that same pharisaical attitude. We don't have anything that God didn't give us, anything good that God didn't give us. And so we must just keep a humble and thankful heart. But listen to this. He says, And the publican, standing afar off, would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to the house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So it's very important that you and I and if we have allowed pride to come in, like I shared with you yesterday, Frank and I both allowed pride to enter in. It's very subtle, very subtle thoughts here or there. As you begin to possess your land and begin to grow in the things of God, Satan's temptation is to get over into pride as if you had anything to do with it. Saints, I'm telling you, even the faith that we have, God gave to us. Any revelation knowledge, he gave to us. We don't have anything that we did not receive from him. And when we came to him, we had nothing. And then 
once we made Jesus Lord, then we inherited everything. But you know that pride will cut it off because the word says that he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And one of the things that I see in America is that America has been proud about America and not remembering that it was Lord our God that raised us up. He said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his inheritance. So the only reason this nation has been blessed, two reasons that I know of, one is that um, we bless Israel and we supported there being a nation and the other is that we acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. And that's the only reason that America has been blessed. So a prayer that is a powerful prayer for us to pray for this nation or whatever nation you're in he says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I'm going to say in this case, the wicked way is pride because pride goes before a fall. But if we will humble ourselves and repent of the pride that we've had as a nation, not recognizing that Jesus is the one that raised this nation up and that our eyes must be turned back on him. He says, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Do you know in one place, and I think it might be Hosea, that the Lord actually says that the sin of Sodom was pride, pride, fatness of bread, and idleness. And that was the pride, that, that was their sin. And so we humble ourselves. I know many, many Christians across the land are asking and receiving the mercy of God but turning from our pride of this being such a great nation, and it is, but it's only because God's blessing has been on it. So saints, let's turn our hearts in this area as well and repent of any pride that we've had of even living in America and America being a great land. We boast in the Lord our God, and our hearts are turned back to the Lord in Jesus' name, trusting him to once again make this land great. No person is going to make this nation great. Only God. Only God. And so we just pray that he raises up godly, righteous people who will look to him for guidance and look to him for wisdom in what to do, humble people, humble-minded people. In every office, we ask that, Father, in Jesus' name. And for myself, Father, I repent of my pride of America, of the pride that I've had for our country, in Jesus' name. And I just thank you, Father, that you have forgiven my sin and cleansed me from all unrighteousness. And that's how we repent of the pride he says, if we confess our sin, so let's say if we confess our sin of pride, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as the Holy Spirit said earlier, allow him to shine the light on any pride in any area of your heart so that we can get rid of it. 
I love what Brother Copeland said. He said, don't run from God when you sin. Run to him. He is the only one that can cleanse you and take care of it. Well, this has been a good word today. This, this has been a cleansing word. And, you know, it just always feels so good when the word is allowed to, to cleanse us from any unrighteousness. So again, we're cleaning the soil of our heart. And in this case, of pride and arrogance and haughtiness. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God this word is working in each one of us mightily in Jesus' name.